Go. Go. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm just gonna be taking you out to the 535 diesel because I found another common, common, common problem in these cars, which a lot of you will probably like this because this is a main common cause for keeping your car awake and not letting the modules go to sleep. Now this one particular controls a lot of the stuff on the car and a lot of the modules. It communicates with a lot of the modules and if it goes bad, it can conflict with all the modules and keep the whole car awake and keep waking the car up. So I'm gonna show you exactly what it's doing. And I'm gonna show you why it's keeping the modules awake and why this is the common problem. And like I said to you, I've said this many, many times about this happening on previous cars of mine, and people were misdiagnosing it and didn't know what the problem was. So I'm gonna show you how the problem goes away when you actually disconnect it fully. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually tell when you've got a faulty module and how to know when your car's going to sleep. Now at the moment, the 535 diesel is asleep as the gearbox lights off and also all the other stuff is off and I've run this today and we've done a power plan to see if there's any kind of drain on the car which I found out where the drain was coming from and what I'm going to go out and do is reconnect it and I'm going to show you what it's actually doing and then we're going to pull it out and I'm going to show you how everything goes to sleep and also how that module ends up clearing the whole fault of the central electronics failure so as you'll see here guys I'm now inside the car and I'm just going to start it up and I'm going to show you now even just sitting there like that you can see the dash is going absolutely mental and this is the whole problem of the central electronics failure. It's causing everything to go mental, all the electronics, and sending mixed signals throughout the whole car. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna start the car up so I can show you properly what it's actually doing, and we can kill off the electronics failure to show you what the fault is on this car. Now, as you'll see, it just keeps flickering on and off. That's because the electronics are completely knackered. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is... So as you'll see there, guys, it keeps coming up, central electronics failure. Now the dash just keeps going absolutely ballistic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you what the problem is and how it's actually affecting the whole system. So as you'll see guys, we're just waiting for the iDrive to boot up um, from Dash, I obviously have to show you what it's actually saying and obviously you'll see the central electronics failure keep coming up and coming up until I do something to eliminate the calls. Now, this is how I'm gonna show you how you can eliminate the calls and how you check for what module is keeping the car awake and what module it is that's actually fried and to eliminate the problem without having to rip the whole car apart. Now, luckily for me, I don't rip the, have to rip the whole car apart. I just found the problem by doing what I needed to do, which is checking the voltage and then pulling out fuses after that, because the voltage was getting get spiked and obviously the car was not going into sleep mode. Now with this, the D, you can force the car to go to sleep and that'll be sorted. So as you'll see here, it's coming up immediately, central electronics failure, as you'll see right there. Now, as you see right there, central electronics failure. Now, if you look down here at the fuse box, as you can see, which is right here, we need to target this fuse right here, 7.5 amp, and I'll tell you why. You'll see right now why. Now, when we pull that out, you'll see right there, the idle has now stayed still. We're no central electronics failure as you'll see right there. And now no central electronics failure ain't coming up. Now what we've just pulled out is a 7.5 amp fuse for the instrument cluster, which is fuse 13. That says that this cluster is faulty. Now, this is a common problem. The cluster going out, they were a 40 batch during run up from 03 to 06. There was a 40 batch of them keeping the car awake. Now the combi corresponds to the iDrive. The iDrive then corresponds with all the modules. The combi also corresponds with the CAS, which the CAS is the responsible for putting the car to sleep and then when the car's turned off, the car would not go to sleep with this fuse in. Now it goes to sleep, gearbox light goes off. Another way you can tell is the window switch is right there on the driver's door, make sure that is on and make sure it's showing green. If that's showing green, which I'll show you right now. So as you can see right there, it's showing green. Now most people always have this set to turn off so it lock, unlocks the back windows. I advise you not to do that because this, the combi turns that, bu that button off. It will turn the windows off. Now you wanna make sure this is always set to green because if that's set to green, you will then end up knowing if your car is actually going to sleep because that will power off. Then what should happen, you should hear the air flaps close in the back of here where the combi is responsible for shutting off everything. Now, when we took this out, they weren't doing that with the combi plugged in. When I pulled out this fuse, which is for the instrument cluster, 
the whole air vents were shut in and the car was going to sleep. Now I know how these cars work because like I say, this is gonna come and fall. I've had this on two E60s from the instrument cluster and it's both the same. The ZGM isn't working perfectly because the back windows don't seem to want to go down. So that's already at fault. So we need to replace that regardless. But the cluster is the cause of the problem why the central electronics failure, because as you'll see right here now, we're getting no central electronics failure message and the iDrive also works. As you'll see right there, it's all working. It just goes through the stations properly. It's going for everything. And you'll see right here, you know, it wasn't working before. It, now it's all fully working, which it wasn't. Now you see in communication, it's all fully working. That's the essential electronics failure over with. That is the most common cause of problem. So if you get a problem, check your instrument cluster and remove this fuse straight away. If your problem stops, you know you've just eliminated the central electronics problem. Now as you saw down here, it's the fuse right here, which I removed, which you can see, it's blank, which is 7.5 amp. So you wanna make sure that you remove that. Apart from that guys, as you see, everything's now sorted. That's the cause of the problem, the instrument cluster. So we're ordering a new one. We're gonna to have to get it cloned to the car, obviously, because it's gonna have the mileage from the previous vehicle. But that's it guys. Just make sure, like I say, this button, it goes out and that your gearbox light goes out after 10, 15 minutes, come back out to your car and check. Apart from that, job done. So have you seen right there, guys? You've just seen now the instrument cluster is the main culprit for this car. Now, people wouldn't believe that because anyone would, if you took this car anywhere, they'll say, oh, well, the instrument cluster is working because all the dash lights working. No, it does not mean it's working. It means that it could be faulty still because it goes off the can line, the PT can, it reads. The, we've got to remember the combi is synced with all the modules. Every module communicates back to that combi. Now, if the combi goes down, it loses communication with all the modules, hence the central electronics failure because it means it's losing complete it's got a complete failure to all the electronics it can't communicate with the electronics hence the central electronics failure so you guys if you do get this problem make sure you go and check out your combi first because your combi can be the most common common culprit for this car i've explained to you many many times i've had many cars come in and the combi's been at fault i had an e61 with the same problem the car cluster was keeping the whole car awake you know it wouldn't let the kiss valve close wouldn't shut the air vents on the back of the car you'll hear your vents shutting if you sit in the car and lock your car you'll be able to see if your car's going to sleep you can check it that way just sit in your car lock your car and stay still otherwise you'll trigger the alarm and let the car you'll see the window switch go out and you'll hear the dash vents when the combi closes it now the combi is responsible for closing the dash vents and putting the car out to sleep the micro power module is responsible for taking out the center console electronics i.e the eye drop and putting them to sleep so they don't come back awake now you've got to remember the cas communicates with the combi now the class tells the car to go to sleep and it can't go to sleep when the combi is keeping everything awake now what the car was doing is the lights when you turn off the ignition and you'd lock the car the light will keep flickering on and off the service light the ramp light on the on the dash now that was the cause of the battery drain and it was also the cause of why the car wasn't going to sleep because something kept waking up, which that light on the dash was the ramp light keeping the whole car constantly awake, flickering on and off, constant, it would never go off. And obviously when people lock this car, they ain't aware that that's gonna be happening, nobody is. So I was the one that actually solved it. I sat in the car and watched everything and I kept seeing it go on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. And it means the combi's for it. What usually happens is a chip in the back, it cracks. Someone's already been at this combi. I've already took it apart and I've seen that the chip is all cracked down the side. Someone's already been at it, had a go at it like many, many times already. The sticker's all broken. So people have already been at it trying to repair it. This is the problem, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is BMW Doctor here. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.